to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and I couldn't decide which lunchtime snack to make. Chocolate cupcake or raspberry zinger? You don't need to vote, because I made both. Oh, that rhymes. Vote and both don't rhyme. Yeah, they do. Vote you don't both. Need to vote. I'm, I'm glad you're in, uh... oh, it's Cake 101. That's not gonna help you. To begin making my giant chocolate cupcake cake, I baked 14 pounds of my ultimate chocolate cake in four round pans. I'm gonna hold this plate the whole time. That's not uncomfortable. <laughs> my four round chocolate cakes are three different sizes. So what I wanna do is level the tops of the three smaller circles. The largest circle, I'm going to leave the slight hump. Is that not gonna be awkward to hold the entire time? It is already, I'm already in the awkwardness. I think you can just lift it at the beginning of the Okay, practice. cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're Woo, my arm feels better already. <laughs> After I level those three cakes, I simple syrup all four of my cakes with the help of Sir Squeeze. To begin making this raspberry zinger, I baked 12 pounds of my ultimate vanilla cake in two large rectangular pans. I level the top and then I flip them over and remove the caramelization from the bottom. Unlike the chocolate cupcake, we can't get these raspberry zingers in Canada. So there was a How to Cake It covert mission. Jeremy purchased these in Chicago, flew them on a plane to Toronto. There was a chain of transfer and now it's here. <laughs> In this week's VIP video, we are sharing all of Jeremy's adventures. If you're a VIP, make sure to check your inbox. And if you're not a VIP yet and you're interested in seeing stuff like this, as well as a first look at every week's cake, head to howtocakeit.com and sign up. Now it's time for Sir Squeeze to come along and help me simple syrup these rectangular cakes. Sir Squeeze is doing um, double, double duty. duty. Yeah. yeah, he was, he was on the night shift. <laughs> you don't know this song? No. Oh my god, guys, come on. Now let's get back to carving my giant chocolate cupcake. In order to carve this cake, I want to stack all four of my cakes on top of each other upside down. I lay a seven inch cake pan upside down on top of the cake and then I make a mark around that pan. Now I remove the pan and I cut the cake from that circular mark down to the outer edge of the third layer of cake, creating this. Once I've gone all the way around, I'm going to continue carving and I'm just gonna follow the line I created and cut through that final bottom layer. Back to my raspberry zinger, it's time to take my two rectangular cakes and cut them in half lengthwise to create four long rectangles. Now I need to trim both short sides of all four rectangles. Does that make sense? Like each rectangle is a little too long according to the raspberry zinger dimensions. <laughs> I did, so I measured, I drew out a blueprint, now I need to stack these four layers on top of one another and line them all up. No filling yet, don't worry. Now it's time to carve this cake into the shape of a raspberry zinger. Once again, this was really hard for me because they're not perfect. Like, look at this. It's far from perfect. Yeah, it's not perfect. Mine's a little more perfect. I couldn't stop myself. But basically, you just wanna round off the top edge and then round down the sides. It's like a car. I was just gonna say right? that! <laughs> Have you put wheels on it? Yeah. <laughs> Not only do the layers have to be filled like a cake, but it also has, oh, I can't angle this and cut it, Orhan. Oh, you're gonna have to. Can you guys give me a minute? <laughs> Are you actually gonna do this? It's like a secret chair. Of course. Oh my God. It wouldn't look like this cupcake if I didn't do that. And this box has some of it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I saved Orhan a piece. The first thing I need to do is flip my cupcake right side up. I'm gonna carefully remove the top largest layer and now I need to recreate this like secret chamber. I used a spoon and I sort of dug out some cake around the circle to make it an uneven circle. And then I also flipped over my top layer really carefully onto a piece of parchment and dug out a bit of the top. So I'm gonna carefully remove my layers with the hole dug out of them. And then I'm going to spread a very thin layer of chocolate ganache around the perimeter of the hole. 
add the next layer, ganache, add the next layer. The cake is really dense, it's still moist, but dense enough that I can carve it, I can dig a hole out of it, and it's gonna work so well in this cupcake. My imperfect secret chamber is perfect, and now I'm gonna fill it with Italian meringue buttercream. If you want my chocolate cake recipe, it is in my cake book, along with my Italian meringue buttercream recipe, and we now have a book and bottle bundle where you can get my cake book and a sous squeeze all to yourself at howtocakeit.com. It's time to create the secret chamber inside my raspberry zinger. So I removed the top layer of cake and then I used a ruler. I don't want the chamber to look perfect, but I still need it to be centered so that there's an equal amount of cake around the chamber. And then I cut out those smaller rectangles and remove them and then I used a spoon to dig around that rectangular chamber and make it look imperfect. I also dug a little bit out of the bottom layer and flipped my top layer upside down and dug just a little pathway out of that one. I have to reveal the secret chamber of the raspberry singer. <laughs> that wasn't as easy to cut as I thought it would be. So there you go, filling in the raspberry zinger. Now I need to fill my cake with filling. Italian meringue buttercream. It's the same idea with the cupcake. The only difference is instead of filling this cake with ganache or buttercream, which we would definitely see once we cut it open, I'm just spreading a very thin layer of piping gel to glue my cakes together. So I spread a thin layer of piping gel, not getting any into the secret chamber. And then once again, I fill a piping bag with Italian meringue buttercream and pipe it into the entire chamber till it's jam packed with I pipe an extra little bit on the top that will fill the gap in my top layer, and then I just invert the top layer and place it on top. And now I can chill this cake. Getting back to my giant cupcake cake. So now when I'm looking at this giant cupcake, I can tell I just need to shave a bit off the sides so I can get that perfect A-line. Now, you're not gonna believe this. There's no crumb coating and chilling in this cake. I mean, look at this cupcake. There's no icing on the outside other than the top. And it looks like cake all the way around. Do you know how I tell you guys, whenever I carve a cake or cut off the humps, I always save the scraps in a bowl. Because what I did is I took some of my chocolate cake crumbs and I crumbled them apart into another bowl. And now I'm going to add some clear piping gel to the crumbs, enough that I can just stir it all together and it becomes like a chocolate cake paste. Nice. It was the coolest invention in the world. I can't even believe I thought of this. Sometimes I think of ideas and then they don't work and then sometimes I think of ideas and I'm like, how come I never thought of this before? Because I've <laughs> never made a cake that looked like exposed cake, so I never really had to think about it. I'm always crumb coating and chilling. <laughs> Technically, I was still crumb coating, just with crumbs. <gasps> it's crumb coatception. <laughs> Getting back to my raspberry zinger, I... Using the thingy to crumb coat to cover the... The thingy? Yeah. I'm gonna crumb coat with a crumb coat. <laughs> I'm gonna crumb coat with a crumb coat. While I've got this megaphone, I have an announcement to make. Is this loud enough? The crumb coat and chill bundle is now on sale at howtocakeit.com. <laughs> Awesome. It's like a supermarket. This megaphone is not a part of the bundle. It's mine. But everything else you need for a perfect crumb coat and chill is in the bundle. You can pick up your bundle right here. What makes this cupcake so recognizable is the icing swirl on top. How did you do the, like, the glazy part on top of it? We'll get to that, Orhan. Just wait a moment. I took some white fondant and I rolled a giant quart. Even Cody said it. He's like, this is the longest quart of fondant you've ever rolled. I then took a cake board and I used masking tape to mark out that size. So I knew that my swirls had to be two inches. Now I can take my long fondant cord and just carefully start to make those loops and keep them between those two masking tape lines. So I know that I'm straight and I know it's the exact same width all along. And now I can glaze the cupcake. I'm using the same chocolate glaze that I used in my Super Bowl Sunday cake, which is Orhan's favorite, and my banana split cake, 
which is just a combination of semi-sweet chocolate, clear corn syrup, and butter. All melted together into a smooth, delicious smelling glaze. In order to protect the sides of my giant cupcake, I've cut some sheets of parchment paper, and now I'm going to pin the parchment paper around the sides of Why am I doing this? There's footage. So as I glaze, any glaze that drips down will be on the paper and not the cake. Just pour it into a pool and let it pour down. We're welcoming Jyoti back to the step-by-step -step kitchen with a new video. She's made not one, not two, but three cakes and donuts that you have to check out. Head over there to check it out now and there's also a link in the description. Do you recall that when Jeremy was in this kitchen, he had a cake bed? Yeah. And now donuts all over his Instagram. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's not a problem. I have Orhan. And now it's time for the finishing touch. I carefully pick up my icing swirl and I lay it from one end of the center of the cupcake across to the other end. It was practically the perfect size. I had to just trim off like a half an inch. And that was it. Oh, nice. You've been getting so good at this. Like, I know! Sizing. Time to raspberry this zinger. <laughs> I colored some piping gel with pink food coloring to help brighten up the red. And then I had some royal icing on the side. And in the end, I mixed together a mixture of royal icing, raspberry jam, some pink piping gel, and then I altered it the whole way through with pink and red food coloring till I could get it as bright as this is. Share this video with your classmates while you eat your lunch snacks. Do you think people sit in the cafeteria and like text each other? No, they sit in the cafeteria and watch how to cake it, no? You're right, that's yeah. a good, you're right. Mm -hmm. That would be the thing to do. And share our videos as well. And subscribe if they haven't subscribed. And hit that notification bell. So while you're at lunch, you'll know if there's a new video. <laughs> I just pick up this bowl of red glaze and I begin to pour it on the top of the raspberry zinger. I used a spatula to help guide it down the corners, but I just want to let it glaze itself and then use a small offset spatula to guide it and take off any excess. And I do this the whole way along the zinger. Zing. Why are they called zingers? Zinger! I don't know. Here's another thing. Zinger rhymes with singer. That's a rhyme. No, it did not rhyme too. It did not. Vote. And both. They don't rhyme. See, totally right. They don't rhyme. Both vote. Doesn't rhyme. So I'm pressing big dried coconut flakes all around the cake into this raspberry glaze. Now the one tricky thing was once I did this, Cody and I agreed that my raspberry zinger looked more coconutty than this. Because mm. like here, even though it's covered in coconut, it gets saturated. So what I decided to do was take some of my glaze and actually thin it out with a bit of cold water. I kind of had to brush and dab it over the coconut. And when I was happy, I did sprinkle just a touch more coconut on the top because that's where you see it the most. Thank you, Jeremy, once again. You know how like we should do this? Like I want to thank Jeremy for sponsoring and collaborating on this video. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the three cakes and donuts here and my new fingerling cake right here. See you next week.